For many decades, individuals living near the Iran-Armenia border have been mysteriously disappearing from regular villagers and shepherds and their entire flocks of goats to foreigners and adventure seekers. People have been vanishing in the area and locals say it's due to a curse. Since the mid-1950s, however, their disappearances have been linked to an ancient artifact central to the three main Abrahamic faiths. And according to the US government, this artifact was the subject of a classified investigation by the CIA for over 40 years. But what exactly is it? Some say it's an ancient structure that is evidence of how advanced early humans really were. Others say it's an extremely large crashed alien ship that's been scattered across eastern Turkey on Ararat mountain range. All know it as Noah's Ark. So the question is, where exactly is it? Our mystery begins in 1959, when Turkish captain Lan Durupinar discovered an unusual shape while examining aerial photographs of a NATO mapping mission taken over Mount Ararat, about two miles north of the Armenian-Iranian border. Captain Durupinar, a photographer and map specialist who examined thousands of pictures from the mission, believed that the photos were evidence of an archaeological anomaly larger than a football field with a smooth shape resembling that of a boat. He believed that this boat belonged to Prophet Nuh According to Shem Uzmiral, the husband of Durupinar's niece, prior to the discovery, the area had remained largely untouched as local villagers believed the site was under some kind of a supernatural curse or powerful anomalous influence. Locals who lived a few miles down from the site speak of many strange disappearances and even the deaths of individuals who had ventured up to its location to see the anomaly. Over the decades, many people including shepherds who were intimately familiar with the area had either completely vanished or had been found dead in and around the site. Yet, despite these strange occurrences, the Turkish authorities were unwilling to investigate the area due to its proximity to the USSR border. While scientists today state that the likeliest cause of the many disappearances in the area may have been due to the villagers dying from a lack of oxygen at its high altitude, the few who returned came back with pieces of wood that appeared to be from some kind of wooden structure, which they claimed possessed magical healing properties. Since no official reports of an object this large had been made before, and the Turkish authorities attempted investigation into the anomaly based on Durupinar's research failed to yield any results, Durupinar forwarded his photographic negative to an aerial photography expert named Dr. Brandenberger at Ohio State University in the United States. It didn't take Brandenberger too long to confirm that whatever was on Mount Ararat was not natural. Now, while Turkey's examination of the anomaly did not yield any results in 1959, the US's Central Intelligence Agency had already launched an investigation into it 10 years earlier, in August 1949, with its file classified as top secret. On June 17th of 1949, during a routine mission over the area, the U.S. Air Force photographed an unusual structure in the same location Durupinar would explore 10 years later. The matter was passed to the CIA, who sent spy planes to get a better look, naming it the Ararat Anomaly. For the next 25 years, the CIA's interest in the Ararat Anomaly remained hidden from the world 
with many believing that the department's investigation into it as merely an urban legend. However, according to historical researcher Jason Colavitu, 1974 saw various branches of the US government as well as high-profile individuals and organizations from outside of the government take a sudden interest in the location of Prophet Nuh's Ark. But throughout that decade, any and all information about the anomaly would be restricted. Requests that were made from inside of the government were denied, with the agency stating that all photography taken during the 1940s and 50s above Mount Ararat will be unhelpful to their needs, therefore unavailable to anyone outside of the department. Meanwhile, requests that were made from outside of the government itself saw the CIA flatly deny that any such information on the anomaly even existed within the agency. It was not until 1999 that they decided to release a number of documents to the public that indicated that the search for Noah's Ark reached to the level of the White House. Over the next decade, those files would then be uploaded online, proving that the agency were very much concerned about the possible existence of this artifact. But the main question here is why? What possible security risk could an artifact from approximately 100,000 years ago have on this modern age? Some practicing Muslims and Christians would say that such information would prove that mankind existed for far longer than what science claims, thus forcing the modern world to completely rewrite its science books. However, even though such a discovery has the potential to reassess our understanding of human development, it's not something that could be considered a security threat to the mid to late 20th century. Or could it? As already mentioned, for decades prior to the 1949 discovery of the anomaly, local villagers in the area were known to have either completely vanished or had been found dead when exploring the area. The most famous missing person was a Mr. Donald McKinsey, a 47-year-old Scottish climber who disappeared in 2010. McKinsey had been illegally climbing the mountain without a government permit at the end of September that year, before he vanished. His mission in life was to find Noah's Ark. Could the causes of his disappearance and that of many local villagers over the years be merely oxygen deprivation? or is something way more technologically advanced than the remnants of a giant boat resting on top of Mount Ararat. In early 2018, Yavuz Ornik, a lecturer at the Marine Sciences Faculty of Istanbul University, proudly claimed on Turkey's TRT channel that he believes Noah built his ark with steel plates propelled by nuclear power, had sent a drone to look for dry land communicated with his son via cell phone, and was able to save all of the world's species because he filled the ark with not pairs of animals, but sperm and eggs. In other words, developed a form of vitro fertilization. Ignoring the cell phone and drone claim, Ornick's overall argument is fascinating, as he states that Prophet Nuh had access to technology that was on par with what we have today in order to complete his mission. According to tradition, God commanded Noah to collect two of all types of living creatures, animals, birds, and insects, as well as a selection of plants, and load them into the ark to save them from extinction. However, many skeptics say that such a task would have been physically and biologically impossible. For example, Robert A. Moore, writing for the National Center for Science Education, asks how did Noah preserve the seeds needed to restart life after the flood has subsided? How did he control insects, rodents, and fungi? Seed storage is a complex technology, and without proper techniques, no seed can maintain its viability for long. If we are to believe that Noah succeeded in his mission, then maybe Ornick's opinions could have some merit. Could it be possible that Noah's Ark was a misunderstood technology and that it was actually a DNA bank? It's hard to imagine to what extent this would have happened in the past, but if it did, 
it would have to be told as a story like what we see in the Bible and Quran. But this is just one perspective. According to Dr. Barry M. Wormkessel, the Ark and its related technology offer the clearest evidence yet of past alien intervention in human affairs. Wormkessel states that it's rumored that Noah's Ark was built in ancient Iraq and of Akkadian origins, a people he says had links to extraterrestrials and who may have possessed advanced technologies such as stargates and ancient nuclear weapons. However, contrary to the popular opinion, Wormkessel notes that to simply state that the Ark finally settled on Mount Ararat based on scripture is misleading, implying that pieces of the craft could be scattered around the entire Ararat mountain range. This could perhaps explain why several locations within this radius have been suggested for the Ark's final resting place. In January 1994, a team of scientists said that they have found Noah's Ark on the Turkish-Iranian border, 32 kilometers from Mount Ararat. The remote site contained a buried ship-like object, resting at an altitude of 2,300 meters. At 170 meters long and 45 meters wide, it conformed almost exactly to the 300 cubits by 50 cubits boat that God told Noah to build at least according to what was written in Genesis 6 in the Bible. Saleh Bayrak Tutan, head of geology at Turkey's Atatürk University, estimated that the age of the vessel to be more than 100,000 years. With the site directly below the Mount of Al-Judi, a location explicitly named in the Quran as the Ark's resting place. On a side point, while there is a fair amount of debate amongst modern Quranic scholars that the Great Flood was only a local and not a global event, the views of medieval Islam scholars were more open-minded. For example, Al-Mas'udi, who wrote the Akhbar al-Zaman, states that the Ark began its voyage at Kufa in central Persia and sailed as far south as Mecca in what is obviously now modern-day Saudi Arabia before finally traveling back to eastern Turkey and Armenia, where it settled in Judy, where the 1994 discovery was made. This would have made the flood cover an area of at least two and a half thousand kilometers, touching two continents. In November of 2018, researchers from the Bible Archaeology Search and Exploration Institute, otherwise known as BASE, claim that there is strong evidence that the ship is on the mountain of Takht Sulaiman, nearly 700 kilometers from Mount Ararat. The base group says they found wood fragments at the 15,000 foot elevation and took the samples to be analyzed in a lab. The Takht Sulaiman is a notorious mountain with a legacy deep in the supernatural folklore. The Zoroastrian fire worshippers view the area with reverence, while within local Islamic lore, it's said that the Prophet Sulaiman once captured a powerful entity there after it challenged him to take his ring. Bays found in this mountain fragments that showed signs of petrified wood. Furthermore, they found microscopic sea life in a rock sample from the mountaintop, which is normally found at the bottom of the ocean. They say that this discovery makes it a likely candidate for being the remains of the Ark. Among their findings, they state that, 1. The object they found consists of dark rock with an uncanny boat beam-like appearance in several places. 2. The wooden object is at 13,120 feet, but the nearest tree is about 8,000 feet, and there are very few trees even at that level. 3. They found abundant sea life at an adjacent summit, indicating that at one point, the seawater in the area cover its mountain peaks. While there is a consensus amongst biblical and Islamic scholars, and perhaps even the CIA, that the Ark settled somewhere in eastern Turkey, the base organization states that this 2018 Takht Sulaiman discovery does not contradict the earlier findings made in Turkey. Like Wormkessel implied, they state that the mountains of Ararat, at least according to ancient texts, signify an entire region or kingdom 
and not just one specific mountain. And we're doing the search for Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat in Turkey. The, the pieces just don't fit. They just don't mesh. And it led me to believe we needed to, to look somewhere else. So, if no one can find Noah's boat on Mount Ararat, are the scriptures unreliable? Or could it be that Noah's boat is not on Mount Ararat? And While traditionally, biblical archaeologists state that Ararat is the definitive location for the Ark based on scripture, Bayes believes that it's not completely accurate and that the ship could have come to rest anywhere in a region spanning scores of kilometers from Turkey to Azerbaijan and Iran. To us at the mysterious Middle East, it suggests that the Ark was either A. So incredibly large that it spanned several countries, or B. That large fragments were over time spread across the area as the flood subsided, which is the more likely explanation. This latter view somewhat corresponds with ancient Syrian Christian and Armenian Christian accounts of the Ark, as well as an Islamic perspective that states that the ship came to rest on Mount Judy, which is in the general area of Ararat. Did the Ark really exist? And could it have been more technologically advanced than what we imagined? Whatever the case may be, the 20th century has proved itself to be a period of intense secrecy surrounding its existence, and there is no reason to believe that the 21st century would be any different. <laughs>